Despite being full of cards, SteamWorld Quest doesn't feel like a card game. The first RPG in the SteamWorld series bears far more resemblance to a game like Final Fantasy than Hearthstone or Gwent. Instead of letting the deck building mechanics take over entirely, they instead give SteamWorld Quest one of the most flexible and fun turn-based RPG combat systems around. <laughs> SteamWorld Quest tells the charming tale of a group of ragtag fantasy robots out to save the world from an evil army. It's not exactly a unique premise, except for the robot part, but likable characters and some nicely written dialogue keep it interesting the whole way through its 15 to 20 hour campaign. You assemble a traditional RPG party of three fighters, but instead of giving you the routine choice of regular attacks and spells to use each turn, you're limited to only the six strike, upgrade, and skill cards in your hand. Those are drawn from a 24-card deck made up of three individual 8-card decks that you build for each of your active fighters, so the mix of moves could change dramatically depending on who you're using in any given fight. That unpredictability keeps you from falling into any sort of repetitive rut and constantly forces you to improvise. <laughs> Quest's characters all have their own varied and specialized pool of cards to pick from. While they generally stick to recognizable RPG archetypes, each one has a multitude of different strategies available to them. You could outfit the small but passionate mage Copernica with nothing but damage dealing spells. Or skew her more toward a support role with buffs and shields. Similarly, while the large, lovable tank Galio has plenty of cards to taunt enemies and soak up damage, he could also be used as a healer, or even a damage dealer in his own right with the proper setup. I love that none of these inherent styles felt wrong, and I frequently switched between them depending on the roles I picked for other people in my party. In combat, you get to play three cards per turn. While basic cards can be played for free, they generate a resource called Steam Pressure that more powerful cards then spend. That means you have to build up and use it carefully, taking potentially weaker turns to prep for harder hits next time. There's also a clever combo system that activates a special fourth card if you play three from the same character in a single turn, while some other cards get bonus effects if they are played after one from a specific teammate. I loved how much that made me think about every decision I had, as there was often more than one good choice to pick. It also made weaving together the strategies of my different decks feel important and engaging. If the party's plucky leader Armelie was in my lineup with Copernica, I might use her cards that weaken an enemy's fire resistance alongside Copernica's fire attacks. But if I swapped Armelie out, I'd usually revisit Copernica's deck and replace her fire cards with ones that dealt lightning or ice damage. These intertwined combos are all over the place, and constantly switching my party up to find new strategies never got old especially as I got more characters and loads more cards. New cards are mostly unlocked through treasure chests hidden around Quest's simple, fairly linear levels, or through crafting in the shop. You get so many more cards than you can fit in your deck that I was never hurting for choice. But at the same time, it's a little frustrating that the shop is so expensive that I'd often have a dozen or more options I couldn't afford each time I visited. I'd have loved to experiment with them, but I'd either need to grind or play a whole new campaign to use them. Crucially though, you don't need to get everything, and grinding thankfully never felt necessary to progress. That immense card variety is seriously important too, because while the combat was always fun and changing decks could often result in entirely new and unexpected playstyles, the enemies don't stay as interesting. Bosses are unique and exciting but it was a shame to occasionally see stuff like a recolored version of an enemy I fought in the second level show up again later with higher stats and only slightly altered attacks. SteamWorld Quest offers an insane amount of gameplay choice. Its charming characters have tons of individual strategies to explore, which are then influenced by who else is in your party, and again by what cards you actually draw and the order you play them. Because of limited enemy variety, its combat doesn't change a whole lot throughout the campaign unless you actively play around with your options, but doing so is endlessly rewarding. 
Its simplified deck building makes SteamWorld Quest an RPG that's as accessible as it is flexible, and it's one worth playing even if you don't care about card games at all. For more cards and RPGs, check out our reviews of Slay the Spire and Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. And for everything else, keep it right here on IGN.